<laughs> okay, so let's write down. Hi, hi. <laughs> My story. Um, okay. Post. Let's pin this. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I see you all. Thanks for joining in. Thank you for joining in. It's going to be a very great evening. Believe me. <laughs> so let's wait for more people to join in and then we just start. I see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see you all. So I won't be taking too much of your time because I understand that, I mean, it's Sunday and we all have different things we need to do to start the week. There are lots of programs I know you guys are looking forward to attending. Yeah, so I'll make it quick. I hope, I mean, one hour is not enough to tell my story. Believe me, it is not enough to tell my story. It's been, I think this is my 12th year in the fashion business, so you can imagine <laughs> You can imagine the experience I've had um, so far. So, yeah. But I'll try my best to just cut it short. I hope you can hear me. Let me increase the volume of my phone. Okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Yetindi Akonde. I'm a fashion entrepreneur. Yes, I like to call myself a fashion entrepreneur because I do like too many things, but everything in fashion. Yes. So um, my brand name is Yetro's Lane, as you all know, and I've been in business for about um, 12 years. This is my 12th year. I started out in 2008. Um, yes. And under the Yetro's Lane, we have the Yetro's Lane Fashion Academy, where I give back to fellow fashion entrepreneurs. And then... Um, I also have the um, a premium line called the Yeye Today Couture that was launched at the New York Fashion Week in February this year, 2020. Yes, and the Yeye Name brand, as you all know, is a ready-to-wear brand. Um, it's for the everyday woman. I'm sure that's what you all know. When you just see Yeye Chose, you just think, oh, that lady that makes the ready-to-wear. Yes, other than ready-to-wear, I do many other things. I do bridles. I take... Um, your fabrics. I do lots of things. Yeah, there's nothing I, I can't make as long as I'm making it for a female figure. Yes, I make all sort of clothings. Yes, so um, along the line, you know, and another thing about me that I'm so passionate about is teaching fellow fashion entrepreneurs. And why do I love that? Because of my struggles. I struggled, believe me. I struggled so hard. It was difficult when I started. Imagine starting a fashion business in 2008. I mean, Designers were not, not like now that on every street, everybody's a fashion designer. It was really tough for me then, you know, starting up and it was really tough because I, I didn't get anybody to mentor me and it was difficult. It was just so difficult getting people to just share um, their experience with me so that I can learn from it. So that was what actually birthed my academy. I just thought, okay, I've been doing it. People come to me um, for advice on their fashion businesses. I've been doing it for many years. I've trained lots of people. But officially, I launched. <laughs> I launched uh, officially last. Um, was it last year? Yes. Yeah. So the academy is a year old, and under the academy, we have different things. We have the um, pattern and design course, and we have the entrepreneurship course, is which I am so passionate about. We teach um, fellow fashion designers how to structure their business, how to um, start a clothing line, so many topics, how to get their target market, branding, and just recently we added the. Um, mentorship session uh, mentorship class which i call my inner circle so it's just a community of growing fashion entrepreneurs that you know want to grow they are tired of where they are you know we just want to move they need to be amongst other fashion designers to share ideas yeah so that's what the um <laughs> that's what the um, fashion academy is all about so yes why are we here i'm here to share my story on how i started so 
you don't have to be a fashion designer before you listen to this no as long as you're a business owner we have similar struggles we struggle in different areas you know and we're all joining the business for different reasons you know so yes if you're patient enough i'm sure you get one or two um things out of this live um session so yes um i started out in 2008 as an undergraduate how did i start i went for my cousin's wedding and I saw a friend, I always share the story, I saw a friend that made a dress. We're less than, we're not even up to 20 years old then. I saw a friend that wore um, an outfit. And I was like, oh, oh, I mean, this your shirt is really nice. Where did you buy it? And she said she made it herself. I was like, no way, there's no how you can make this by yourself. How did you do You had to cut it and then you stitch it by yourself. From there, I made up my mind I was going to learn. I didn't go back home. I stayed back at my cousin's house and um, at my auntie's house. And I told her to just fix me up in a place where I can learn how to sew. And that was how she fixed me. I learned for just one month. I was there getting all the information I could. I was really fast. I'm a fast learner. I learned everything I could in that one month. I went back home and I started sewing. So what did I start to make? Because I went to Bowen University and we're allowed to wear only skirts, which got boring, you know, so... Um, finding a skirt of my choice. I've always been very fashionable. I always love to wear nice clothes. And so getting a skirt of my choice was just so difficult, you know. So I started out making skirts for myself. I'll make them during summer and then take them to school and wear them. So I have lots of skirts. And I can remember my friend just asking me, they started taking my skirt to go and slim feet and all that. So they started asking me to make for them. And then from my friends to my friends' friends to, you know, classmates, that was how I built my customer, <laughs> you know, they started paying me for what I love doing, you know, so, um, yes, it's in my blood. <laughs> so I started out making the skirts. I'm sure a lot of Bowen nights are in my set, they knew about the skirts business, you know, so I would make them during summer because we are not allowed, it's a private um, Christian university, so there's no how I can take my machine. <laughs> there's no how I can take my machine to, um, to school. So I'll make them during summer make them, make lots of them take to school and sell. I think I was selling at 1,000 Naira then or so, you know, and the cost price for me wasn't even much then. So that was how I started saving up. And before then, I've always, maybe because of my mom, I've always sold things. I've always sold, um, then in school, I sold pajamas. I sold, um, I sold lots of things. I sold recharge cards, you know. I just love to sell. So I've been kind of independent from from the get-go you know i've always loved buying and selling even if it's not much of a profit you know so after bowen you know so that was how i built my customer base in bowen university and i was known for as a fashion designer then so that was when the business started and then i finished in 2009 um i got um i served i got i i i, I served the access bank but then it was in ibadan <laughs> Someone said 1,000 euros gets then gradually 1,500. Yes, she got it then. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I got, I got, um, I, I was posted to Access Bank in Ibadan then. And um, luckily for me, there was this space that was abandoned um, by my dad. You know, so he had few machines there, and if I gave someone to, <laughs> someone said I sold pants. I'm so sorry, babe. Why this? TV. Yes, I actually sold on the West panties and all that. Yes, so um, so I got retained, and the the store, although it was managed by somebody else, but because it was my dad's space, I just had to you know share with her and all very small space. So I started out there. There were one or two machines there, but before then, I already got one machine of mine, and then I'll just buy fabric, go to the market, buy poly cotton, four hundred naira fabric, you know, and like that. I'll just cut it and so and I sold it for 1000 euros. So I was making money then. I was making, you know, little, little change. I was contented because for me then it wasn't much about the money. It was more about the um, the fact that I loved doing it. It was more about passion for me. I just loved to sew, you know. And then um, from there, so I got the store not far from the from Access Bank where I was seven. So it was easy for me. They saw what I was making for myself. In fact, from there, I had my Bowen mates coming to me you know to um learn how to sew you know they came to learn how to sew 
close. So I charged them. I think I was charging 30,000 Naira then. <laughs> I think I was charging 30,000 Naira then for three months. You know, I had um, a couple of them. There was even a guy, Ayo. It was my mate. He came to learn. I had Tayo, you know, a couple of them. So I was making my money like that. So Access Bank too helped me. People there. I started sewing for other staff members. And like that, I started building my business. So I got retained the Access Bank and I went to training school. That was when I knew that, no, this isn't for me. I couldn't just concentrate. My mind was just on my business. I was just thinking, oh, okay, um, I need to go back. The clothes I've taken, you know, sewing styles. I would get to class and I'll be looking at the clothes they are wearing, how they made it. I was just thinking of styles in my head. So I knew that place wasn't for me, even though I wasn't sure what I was doing. I mean, I was, I was probably 20 years old then, or I can't even remember or 2021 i was really young so i didn't really understand that aspect of me working and all that i was like she be too fit i'm okay i'm just contented and so um i had to leave i said i couldn't do it i had to leave it was tough for me because my mom was like why will you leave a, a a a potential job that you get paid monthly for a business that you know you don't you don't even know what you'll be getting getting customers so i guess um she had what she was saying then but i wasn't just saying it i wasn't saying it sincerely you know because i was pretty young so i'm sure she was worried about how will you cope with customers building your business, not wanting to build your career after studying um, computer science and information technology for four years. And then you now say you want to become a tailor. But I was just strong-willed. I left and I started out by myself. And it was going fine. Believe me, um, people that didn't believe I could do it started, you know, believing it. They started telling me all sort of things. They are proud of me. I was very consistent. I was doing the business the way it was supposed to be. I was learning on, on you know, I was improving myself. My client base was growing. But I knew something was missing. I was just doing it out of passion, you know. The business side was zero. I couldn't get anybody to pull me through because, you know, I was in Ibadan then. So the people were not, they, I mean, Ibadan of all places is not where you see people that you can emulate. Just very few of them and they were not willing to share their experience, you know. So luckily for me, um, my Atafo then was always doing these fashion conversations with mine. So I would travel all the way. It was free. I will travel all the way and, you know, I'll be there. So it was the one that really held my hand and, you know, put me through some things then. Even though it was tough, you know, getting to move, to get into, you know, but it was accessible. I could call him and all that. So it was one person I knew that really helped me on my journey, you know, because I was pretty young. How do I deal with staff? How do I deal with these people? How do I deal with customers? How do I get them to pay me my money? You know, there are lots of things that were lacking, you know, but um, to the glory of God, it went on fine. I grew, I grew, I grew. I didn't, I always didn't want to make the same mistake over and over again. So it was quite motivating for me. You know, it was quite motivating for me. From that small space, I got a big space. Then I, I moved on to the, the old flat, like the old complex, the floor. I got the old floor. And it was obvious that the business was growing, which I'm very grateful um, about. But hmm, something now happened along the line. Things started to go wrong. But I guess that was because um, the business was growing. It was becoming too much um, for me to handle, I didn't know how to handle some things. Probably number one, my maturity. You know, in fact, there was a time I had an issue. I noticed people were owing me so much, and because I had older clients, it was difficult asking them for money. And because of my upbringing, I've never been. I I can't be rude. You know, I just I'm just very easygoing. I I don't like issues. You know, so I I had to learn the hard way. So I started building structure in place. I didn't even know it was structure then. I started building structures in place that, oh, no, you have to drop deposit before I can make your clothes. So at least I can have some money to run, you know. But running costs in Ibadan is not so high. Rent is not so high. So when you sell, you see your money instantly, you know. Excuse me. So getting them to start paying deposits, how will I tell them? It really affected me. I lost some clients along the line, some that knew that, oh, this girl is already, you know, running the business the way it's supposed to be they stayed back you know so um it got to a time when my staff started misbehaving i had lots of them i think i had close to 20 then 
joiner. So what I do then is I cut the clothes by myself and the join. But it got to a time I was I couldn't I couldn't meet up again. So I had to employ more people, train them on how to cut. So I had two extra hands, you know, cutting while the joiners would join. You know, so I noticed that that morning it was it was it was on April one, April four. <laughs> I got to the store. Five of the tailors had gone. I was thinking, okay, they would come back. You know, probably they they, they came. They are late or something. Twelve o'clock. I did not see them. Then I started getting messages one after the other. And hey, we are sorry. Blah blah blah. Ah, I went to my other store. So I had another retail store where I was doing the ready to wear then because people loved what I was making. Ready to wear wasn't common then. You know, they just loved the way I wear the clothes. And I didn't used to use Ankara then. I used polka dot fabric, plain fabric, scrap and all that. So they were always surprised that they could find something that didn't look really African, something that they always buy, you know, um, in Nigeria, in Ibadan for that matter. So I had another store where they could just pick up their ready to wear. And if I just went to that store, I started crying like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? Why did these people do this to me after me being so kind to them and all that? But I realized that, okay, I must have made some mistakes and all that. And which now, <laughs> you know, that day was so funny. I thought it was April Fool. You know, I thought probably they were just trying to fool me because it was on April 1st. I thought it was really April Fool, you know, but... By afternoon, I didn't see them. And then one of them sent me a message saying that she's sorry. That it was this other lady that they just planned and, you know. So, but now I understand that and it can't happen to me again. Because I did not have that relationship with my staff, you know. So, um, it is normal when, whenever one person is dissatisfied and then you do not control it as soon as you can. It just spreads out like that. And that was what happened. Even though they did not plan to. But that, that's what usually happens. So, when you see people just leave a place... Um, all of a sudden, there had been something that has already been going on that you failed to address. So I learned that and I knew that it was never going to happen to me anymore. So that was the, um, that time was very difficult for me. But thank God I knew how to sew. So we had deliverables and it was at that point they left. I just cleaned up my tears, went back to the store and I started joining the ones I could, you know. And that was it for me. That experience to me really shook me. Like, why would they do that to me? I felt betrayed. I felt like, after all, my kindness and all. But all those things, they're just sentimental. Yeah, because, you know, I wasn't doing the business the way I should do it. I was running out of passion, you know, which is not supposed to be. So, yes, if you're running your business out of passion, it is high time you switched over to doing your business because you're running a business. Because these people... It is what you allow that grows. If you cannot define your business, I mean, they will, cannot help you define it either. So I learned that um, the hard way. And, you know, um, starting up for me, it was more like I, I... So how did I even do it that I grew to that point? It was actually... I've always been very um, prudent. I don't spend unnecessarily except on my fetish. or Except on some things that I know that I love. I love some certain things. <laughs> like um, I love hair I do love hair I can have the same type in like three <laughs> the same type of hair like three of the same type of hair you know but um, yes yeah, so that is <laughs> somebody is saying please can I name and shame because she's aware she was part of my story then she was, she was in my space so you know so how did I start every morning while I was seven let me actually tell you how I saved while I was seven, I did not touch the salary access bank was paying me. So I kept them. My mom ensured I kept them. I kept the money. So I was spending the government money and the little... Like I said, I wasn't born with it. <laughs> Mama is laughing at me. Um, I, I, I wasn't spending um, um, unnecessarily. My store was just... It was very easy for me to just go to the store. So I wasn't spending so much. So I would save up my salary from access bank and then spend the one government gave me or was it the government when i was spending i was just saving a particular one and every mo every two months or was it three months i can't remember i buy a machine then i was always buying the black head machine you know i'll buy it and keep so that was how i grew it so when people ask me now how much do i need to set up a fashion business i find it very difficult answering that question because i did not get any bulk money to um start up it was my savings that i was just using to buy the machines i feel Machines is the asset for me, then irons and some few little things. But I understand now, you know, store and all that. But it's not always about store. I will move to that story of when I was working, when I when I moved um to Lagos and all that. So yeah, 
so back to my story and um i had to just um you know get back on my feet like okay they've gone they've gone fix up the clothes what next can i do <laughs> and all that so the other people come in i ensure that i was close to each one of them so when there is anything wrong i try to control it immediately you know so um i thought i was fine i thought i had learned that part and then something else happened to me in 2014 um i got married and this is for the ladies you know in whatever business you are um, except you are one of the maybe lucky ones, but life comes with these issues. Life throws so many issues at us. So I got married, and before then, you know, I already have my stores in it, but I was doing fine. Like, I was like the main person then. Like, every now and then, I get interviews at radio station. Um, NTA International came from Abuja to interview me on that young boss. I was doing fantastic. The um, government recognized me then. They gave me on the 30 award as best entrepreneur, fashion entrepreneur. You know, I was doing fantastic because, you know, Ibadan is a small place and all that. So I was really doing fine. I was contented. I was happy at the growth. My mom, my dad, proud of me because they didn't know that I could do it. People that were making fun of... I can remember my mom saying someone was making fun of her that... Um, uh, um, let me say it in Yoruba, Omoe, Taylor Lonshe, that means our daughter is now doing tailor, tailoring work, you know, so they just saw tailoring as one random thing then, but I changed it for them because I was hardworking, I'm still hardworking, and I changed the narrative of a fashion designer, like, I don't have to be a dropout before I know how to sew, before I have a fashion house, before I do what I love to do, so it was like a shock to many people, and that was how I grew very strong in the business, and I knew that I cannot. <laughs> Someone said personal designer to the first lady. Yes, I was sewing for the first lady then and lots of, you know, because they were looking at me like, um, you know, this young girl, this this little girl. I was just 21, 22, thereabouts. She's doing so well. I got lots of backlash. I got a lot of envy. I, you know, there were too many things. I, I won't lie. It was very difficult for me at that point. People will come. I've had... The, issues where people will walk into the store and be like there was a particular woman i cannot forget that word she came in i was like so this is you that i've been calling since you cannot come and meet me you know and i was looking like what did i do now she be <laughs> you said you wanted to come so i saw lots of that you know especially from the older ones i was very at some point i said i wasn't going to sew for older people again because they were really riding on me the fact that i would always cry when you know the you know lots of things but all that was just because i was doing it out of passion and I was still very immature and I didn't know how the business side was supposed to go. So I was really struggling. I just knew. And with the experience I had with Access Bank, I knew a little about customer service. And with my upbringing, with my kind of person, I know some things. I know my right from wrong. So I try to thread in that um aspect and that's why now you won't see me you won't see me so nonchalant about some things on instagram you won't see me ranting you won't see me doing all sort of things that's because of how i was brought up and my own personal um self-development um over time and my experience you know i've seen it all i know the implication of those things so i try to avoid it and then the worst came I got married and because of my two stores i, I wasn't thinking like love sha hmm. I wasn't thinking like, okay, what's going to happen to the business? I think in my mind then I was just thinking, and that's what happens when you fail to plan. I was just thinking, oh, my business will be fine. I already put some structures in place. I have my books, my books. I love to, I love to rule the books. I love to, you know, make everything clear. I had forms, you know, whenever I go to a restaurant and I see how they do their forms, I try to um, do the same for my fashion business. I grew that, 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 that brand. I grew it. And so, um, you know, I felt I had structure in place. And there was a time I went to London College of Fashion. That was 2014. To study pattern drafting before I got married. And things were going on fine. My staff, I knew. I was close to my customers, you know. So I knew when everything was... You know, I, I just felt, ah, no. I think I can leave my business for a while and it will be okay. Little did I know that, no, it doesn't work that way. I came back, it was still fine. And then I just felt, oh, well, I'll just be shuttling between Lagos and Ibadan. My husband was in um, Lagos then. And I was in Ibadan. So I was just like, I, we didn't even talk about it. I didn't plan it, you know. And that is due to probably my immaturity. I didn't know what was in for it, in, uh, what was, what would be in it for me. And maybe because I'm the first child, you know, so I don't have anybody that, that has experienced that kind of thing before. So I couldn't relate. I just felt everything would be easy. It's however I want it and all that. So I got married to the glory of God, happily married. And I got pregnant. That was when it hit me. 
So I was sick for the first three months. I was sick for the first three months. I was on bed rest. All I could do was from the room come down to the sitting room and that is it. I already have a, 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 a bed at the dining. So I can only climb the stairs one if I don't want to stay in the hospital. So my mother-in-law had to come all the way. She was with me. She left her job, you know. So it was really tough at that point and i added 30 kg from 65 kg i moved to 97 kg i changed completely i will look for my picture and post it so you see the transformation i changed my hormones became messy i could not beat me i was already saying ah if i'm pregnant i will sew nice things for myself i'll do my photo shoot i'll do this i'll do that eh i could not do any of such and that is real life issues that women face in my inner circle we all have that kind of issues. Most people that dropped their job, that resigned, it is always probably due to um, childbirth or something. There's always one thing. So you have to plan ahead. You have to give room for things like this. That when it happens, what would happen to my business, you know? So I could not travel. I could not function. So design was a problem. You know, and moving from Lagos to Ibadan. So my business was just in Ibadan. The money I was making was just from Ibadan. I did not have a client, any clients in Lagos. It was tough because Ibadan is cheap. My rent there, how much? 250k for one. If you see that floor, I'm sure if I would get that kind of space here in Lagos, I'll pay 5 million naira. I'm not joking. So I was just paying how much. And then I moved to Lagos and hey, rent alone. You know, tailors were even charging really high on like it. But when you just pay, join us 500 naira to join or 1,000 naira to join. A tailor here is telling me, bring 5,000 naira. You know, bring 5,000 naira. Somebody's asking, how do I join in? I said, I'll talk about it. I'll, I'll try and talk about it. So bring 5,000 naira to sew one cloth. Bring 10,000 naira to sew one cloth. Salary, you must collect 60k, 80k, 100k. How? How? Where will I get it from? So it was difficult um, sewing Ibadan clothes here in Lagos. So I was just doing, okay, sew it. I had a guy go and buy the fabric. I had my contact and all, but it was not sustainable. And at that point, guess what my girl did? There was a particular girl. Her name is Diola. She planned with another tailor. I just noticed the tailor. Two of them said they were not um, working again, married. They were just, they should have given one excuse. I said, okay, no problem. Um, It's fine. I'm very trusting, you know. It's fine. I give you that chance. If you're very nice to me, ah, why not? I'm, I'm, I'm nice and all that. But if you are nasty, I just carefully find my way. <laughs> no fight, you know. So when they said that, I said, okay, no problem. You can, um, you can leave. Little did I know that the girl would take orders from customer, send it to the tailors. They will share the money. Ha! It was tough. It took time before I realized. And guess how I got to know? Another staff of mine that was with me. You know, then she just called me that, man, you have been nice to me. You have been this, that, 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 that. This is what is happening. I want you to send someone to the store to give them clothes. And then um, this girl and this person, they are planning. They don't, they don't. I shall notice sales was not coming in like before. I could not trace it because my head was not even, I was sick. I was sick, you know. And, you know, everything was just strange to me. Like, what kind of thing is this? I cannot design. I cannot. I've moved to a new location. I don't know anybody here. I can't go out. I can't drive. I can't because I don't know the road. Everything was strange. So I was in a different, I was in a different world. And we did that. My father-in-law sent in clothes. They sent police to also go and all the clothes. We sent like five or ten, five, about five, more than five people to her. This girl did not for once tell me, oh, this is what they sold. They were sharing the money. I will call. Did anybody come? Ah, nobody came. They will share the money. And they were charging high. They were charging like 10K in Ibadan. They were charging, you know, 5K, you know, for Ibadan standard. It wasn't that high then. I'm sure now everything would have changed, you know, because, you know, the narrative has been changed and all that. So, like that, hmm, I thought it was a joke. By the time, my father-in-law said, no, this can't go on. They now, we now planned with the police and everything. We shall make sure we caught them here because I knew they were going to dis they were going to deny. We now caught them. We had evidence and they arrested her and they just did some. So I was asked to come, although I was already feeling fine, but I'm like, ah, I can't do this. Coming all the way and, you know, the pregnancy wasn't so, I was, I was, I was sick. So I had to be careful, but I just had to, you know sign some things and do some it was really messy for me at that point so i went to Ibadan. i stayed for a while and i just told him i said you know what she she, she in fact if if i had if i had held if i had <laughs> if i wanted to show her she'll still be in prison till today but i just said you know what let her just go 
at that point i just felt no i can't by the time we calculated all the things she she now started confessing customers started calling because i now sent some messages we realized she had between them they've over 500k and you can imagine 500,000 in Ibadan. That is wickedness. But I knew that, well, <laughs> it was my loss. I had to just think of a way to... I just told them, you know what, let her just go. I just shut down the stores. I knew that there was nothing I could do. I just shut down the stores. And I was now back. Like, okay. Seven, six years of hard work. Just like that. Gone like that. What do I do? Where do I start from? I just felt, okay, you know what? Let me just have this child and let's see. So... While in Lagos, I just started, okay, what can I do? The people that could pay Lagos money, you know, it was, it was, I, I, for a while I was not making profit because I was trying to satisfy my bad on customers because of the way I was charging them from time, you know, it wasn't working. I knew that that target market cannot, is not sustainable in Lagos. So I had to grow my customer base all over again. It was really tough, believe me. And this was 2014, 2015. 2015. It was tough for me. It was really tough. You know, so the brand you see now is as a result of many, many, many things. Things that, you know, would even cost you to say, okay, I'm not even doing anything again. You know, so I just start, started all over again. I set up my, the sitting room. I just converted it to a showroom. Then we're working tailors. We're working at the BQ. It was Lagos. I knew that we have to have the tailors and all that. So they were working in my house. And like that, I did lots of things. I had exhibitions. You know, I'd given birth to my baby then. So I would go to exhibitions with my baby, spend money. I was selling on Jumi and Kunga. I did not keep quiet. Exhibition, you will see me there. Trainings, you will see me. Because it was now more fun. Because Lagos, they had lots of trainings. I just wanted to build up myself up. I, I knew that I could not do this for long. I mean, I have to do it the right way. I've been running it out of passion. I have to learn how to run a proper business. And that was when my story changed. I remained very hardworking. I stayed... Okay, somebody's asking, how did you grow your customer base? Yes, like I said, I have to start all over again. And for, luckily for me... There was a customer, you see, I was telling my inner circle members um, last when we had um, Mama NHN in the house. I was telling them when they asked me how I got to know her and some of the people they know, some of the no names, Mommy Abba, Senator Itagiwa, all this, how did I get to meet them? And I was sharing with them, I said, see, the work of your hands is only what will take you places and the, 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 how you make your customers feel. So I used to social for Shola listen in um ibadan then and one of the person that sells fabrics for her always is stopped at her who is this your tailor i would like to meet her i'd like to meet her so when i moved to lagos she was so excited and then she came into my house i was working from home so 2015 2016 in this lagos till 2017 i was working in my house the road to my house was so bad you know but people came even Ethel's wife, I can't remember her name, then came all the way to my house. So your work will take you places as long as, and that's why I keep saying, except I'm not aware, there can be an issue with your work. And I would say, well, that is it. No, except I am not aware. We try our best to make sure we fix things. We try our best if you give us that chance to fix things. And, you know, she came over and that was it. She loved the clothes I made for her. Guess what she did? She has a store in Balogun. She brought all our other colleagues that sell fabrics in Balogun. Somebody is saying, I remember visiting your sitting room to buy my outfits. <laughs> yes, so thank you. So um, she brought all our market people. You know, these youngies in the market. She brought them and those ones started bringing their clothes. They were wearing. So when they have a customer that is buying um, fabric, they just direct the customer to me. So when I came into Lagos, I was doing more of bespoke. And that was it for me. That was it for me. My ready to wear I was selling on Jumia. My I did a photo <laughs> my photo shoots immediately after pregnancy. I have them. Maybe I'll post some pictures about them. So I was always on the photo shoot outside my my house, you know, just stay there with my phone, take pictures, you know, like that. So I was consistent. And that's the thing. And that was how my customer uh, my my customers began to grow. You know, and from there I was selling on Jumia Kunga exhibitions. I am there. You know, so I was just everywhere. I, I just wanted to be in people's faces and all that. But my work brought that woman in. And till today, all the people you have seen, it is it is always through my work. Not because somebody introduced me to, mm -mm, it's our day like that. You know, maybe I paid my way into getting someone. It is the work of your hands. 
you understand so that is the main thing how i met um um mommy abafolawiyo i made a dress for my husband's colleague actually that weekend i made clothes for two people one woman you know and in the evening, I got a call, and this is about like I was like ah, that name. Um, I saw one cloth you made for someone. I even thought it was the woman I made cloth for, not knowing is um um a boon's cloth they saw. And she's just sent me the picture, and I'm like, can you imagine? I wasn't even expecting that. Is that kind of? I mean, is that work that will bring her to me? And that was it. That was that was how I won her. And God just said we would meet. So with hard work, with consistency, with your prayers, with your, your attitude, it goes a long way. I see lots of things on social media these days and I wonder, you know, I wonder why we do that to our businesses. You just go there, you run, you see all sort of things to your customers. How, you know, you don't do things like that because they can tell. They can tell. And people want, they would only buy from you if they trust you. You understand? So, yeah, so that was how I had to start all over again all over again from my boys quarters from my boys quarters so it was getting very uncomfortable you know for me sometimes people will knock on my door <laughs> yes yeah, so, so mama is talking some some people will knock on my door and you know around 6 a.m and i have to come in there was a day like that the person was in my house and i was so much in a hurry and i pinned i was supposed to i was changing my son's diaper and i pinned you know i i, I didn't wear his diaper i wanted to pin his um cloth and i mistakenly pinned his um stuff with the you know it felt really bad there was another one i almost um stepped on my i stepped on my laptop screen because i was just doing everything you know so ah it was really really you know tough for me it was getting uncomfortable and I now got, in fact, before I got the store, there was another breakthrough I had, you know, and that's what I'm telling you. See, Mama NHN is talking about it, and that is why, yeah, can you imagine, you know, see, Mom, that's why it's not good to lie. NHN is saying something now that when Mommy Abba came, she came and saw my wrap pants in her store, and she gave her my contacts that time. So it is only your work that would get you there. You can't do wuru wuru to the answer. I had an experience with a vendor online. I'm like, so this is what people go through. No wonder people come and they will ask you, can I trust you? Can I trust you? I bought something and it was a mess. You know, I know that my customer can't even, they can't even stand. I can't even do it with the way I was treated, you know. And now, how did I get to um, NHN store? I was, it was in 2017. Yeah, that's where I, I was going to. I went to Ibadan for, um, for um, holiday. Her birthday it was october i went and then i just got that call she wanted to order one dress i made she saw online she did not know me i mean i was just new in lagos she you know she just saw that dress and she ordered for that dress when she mentioned it, i said eh do you know how many of your pictures i have on my phone i was i was short of words i said she she paid she she asked for um she asked me to deliver i don't have to bring it by myself i said me i'll take that cloth by myself by the time did i take it by myself i deliver i can't even remember by the time i sent the cloth she posted on her page, see God giving um, influencer, <laughs> God giving influencer, divine connection. And that's it. How, that is how it happens. You don't have to. How many people will you pay? It happened due to my prayers, due to God seeing my struggles and how I did not give up because he gave me that gift in the first place. There is no how he will take it from me. He gave me a gift and he gave me the gift, gift of a child. He gave me the gift, he gave me the gift of the marriage. There is no how he take anyone from me. He has to fix it. And he fixed it in miraculous ways. You know, I don't want to get emotional, you know. And she just called me. She said, you have nice things, blah, blah, blah. She posted on her page. I delivered, yes. She posted on her page. That day, I could not, my DM was banging. I could not, first time in my life. In fact, there were, um, I didn't even know there would be messages at the back of DM that you have to accept. I could not finish responding. You know, at some point, my husband was helping me to respond. At that point, I knew that, hey, capacity, I need to expand. I, you know, I need to expand. And that was it. That was it. Till now, I still have, I still have customers from um, NHN. That they, is either me or they, are, they just remain loyal, you know. And the next thing I heard was, you know what, you have nice things. Perfect finishing and all that. Bring them to my store. Let me sell for you. I said, ha, let me just faint. So when you're asking me, how did I get my target market? That is it, oh, my work, plus prayer, plus, plus consistency, plus attitude. 
and that was it. I stocked my clothes at a store. I can remember she had one one event, one event, um, a, a birthday event, and she said, "Yes, they come and sell." That day, I know how much I sold. Pa pa pa! I gathered money. I got shop straight up. You know, I saw the space. I just can't remember if it was at that point. You know, I was saving up for you know. I just you know that was it. That was how. I just Lagos. It's not, it's not as if I've been in Lagos for ten years. No, I'm just four years in Lagos. I've been because I opened my store in um, I opened my store in 2017 and this is 2020. So I'm just like three years old in Lagos. So it's not as if I've been and I started all over again. So let me just say I'm three years old in the business, you know. And that was it. That was it. You know, she's saying now that my work spoke for me, and that was it. She was just like, no, this person is too good to be in that place. Let me do what I can. To push out there till today, I still stock my clothes at NHN's place. If not for attitude, I won't remain there, you know. So, yes, it goes a very long way when you put it out there. People are watching, they would not want to associate, associate themselves with someone that, that is rude, that is, you know, they would not. So, you have to watch it. Whether we all know the struggle is real, we know how customers can be, we know all the, the but see, it comes with the work, it comes with it. You know, it comes with it. If you're not ready for it, it's better you just shut down. If other companies, if all companies can have, if all companies can have controls, if they can have customer service, um, if network um, organizations can have customer service departments, do you think that they are perfect? Nobody is perfect, but it is how you handle the issues. Some will go, some will stay. Mommy is saying my humility. I'm very respectful. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, you know, so it goes a very attitude. Attitude. Attitude keeps you there. Attitude keeps you there. I'm not saying you'll be good for everybody. There are a lot of other people that I've met that, you know, we are not together anymore because God did not. I don't even bother my. I don't even bother myself because I know it is not God ordained. You can't have everybody love you. You can't have everybody in your space. So I allow it and I, I, I detach peacefully, you know. So please, you have to be humble. People are seeing it. If I'm that bad, you know NHN now. She will not, you know her, see all the things she's writing now. I'm getting so emotional. saying I'm very respectful and appreciative because you don't feel entitled over what? Okay, so that is how I grew my basil and I'm still growing. I still have dreams and I feel like, okay, how can I give back? How can I do it? You know, and that was why I now said, okay, my academy. But I won't go into that now. My academy is because if we have people like this that can help you, that can lift you up, it will be a better place. But look at my story. I could have quit at that time. I could have quit in 2014. Yet yeah, there will be no way. You won't even have my clothes in your, in, in your, in your closet. And beyond clothes, I know the, 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 the way people feel when they wear my designs. Forget that there are a lot of people out there. Forget that we do, they are doing, we are all doing the same thing. No, it goes a very long way. I have loyal people that would always say, no, it is Yetro's lane. Or not, I have customers from seven years ago, um, ten years ago that are still patronizing me till date. So your work, your work, your work will speak for you. It will speak for you. Anyhow, Anyway, it will speak for you and most of all the way the old social media is now you have to be careful You have to be very very careful because people people see you before even they, they rate you They have an impression before they even meet with you mommy. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you You're part of my success story, you know, so yes, you have to you have to, you can't buy it always. If you buy yeah, influencer, if you buy it, it's just for a while. The contracts will end. You understand? Somebody is saying, what is the right time to post your work on Instagram? There's no right time. Just be you. There's no right time. Sometimes, bye, auntie. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. You know, see, um, there's a um, precious spell here. She's been buying my clothes from Bowen University. I made a wedding dress. They just keep coming back. Not that they won't buy from other people. Of course, do you not get tired of eating the same thing all over, over and over again? You know, you want to test all that, but they keep coming back because of the experience. So that's why it will get to a point where you understand your market. All the experiences then 
from Ibadan to Lagos. I made, do you know that was that's basically understanding your target market, understanding your target audience. You can't sell to everybody. The price I was selling in Ibadan, there's no how I can sell it now and it will be the same. You understand? You know, there is no how. Like, I can see lots of questions. Somebody was asking that when can you post? Post any, it depends on you, it depends on what you're trying to sell. Another person is asking, you can start sending in your questions. Let me just take your questions before we um, end the um, video. Someone is saying, can you briefly talk about the price charge? So let me tell you something, yeah? I can go on and on to um, explain all these things to you. But it goes beyond me just saying, this is how you charge, this is how you charge. And which is why I had to just come up with the Year Chosen Fashion Academy. It is my ministry. That Academy is my ministry. And that is where I give back. And I don't just give, I give back to the people who are doing the same thing. Because my belief is that the sky is big enough for everybody to fly. If I had someone to hold my hands that time, I would not, I would not go through all those things I went through. But I do not regret it because I believe that everything will work out for my good. All those experiences is what is making you listen to my story. This same story I'm sharing with you would help someone out there today. Would make somebody decide, no, I'm not going to quit this thing. I'm going to continue and seek help. You understand? So that academy is just what I am using to reach out to people. And how do I do that? I've been doing it for many years. People come to me. I take my time. I know that. But now, you know, I, am, I'm, I'm, I have so much to do. And let me share one thing with you. That made me also um, grow so fast. I made up my mind. I said, I would not go through the same thing again. I want to run my business the right way. Thank God I was in Lagos and I was just thinking, okay, what can I do? I did some research and all I could get, all my head was, all God was just telling was that trainings, trainings, trainings trainings you need to get trained and because of my exposure in access bank just for that one and a half one year i knew what it was like to have a corporate i've never worked in any corporate organization so you can imagine when you come to me you see how how structured we have you see how it is you and you're wondering now did this girl have a bm a msc does she even do phd in fashion design course mm -mm. i did not do all that my experience but i could have shortened that learning curve if I had people to train me. And luckily now, there are so many people, so many resources out there. Google is out there. YouTube is out there. You can learn so much. Whether you pay your way through it or you learn it directly, it is made available, which makes it easier for me to even run a business now. But there was a decision I made. When that training was coming to my head, I'd spent money doing all sort of things, you know, spent on exhibitions, spent on I'll go, I'll not sell anything. There was one I did three days. I paid 50K. I took my son. It was six months then. I did not sell anything. And I knew that, no, there was more to it. And one thing I did, one training I did that changed my life was a structure class with Tara Durutui. And I would never forget that moment. Even though she might not even know the impact, I never forget. And I try to show it every, in every way I can. That moment, I knew that, yes, I just hit a jackpot. And it is not by the training. We have lots of people that we did the training together. And, you know, I, I, you, they are not... I did my homework. After that day, I did my homework. I went beyond what she... Even... I, 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 you know, when you know those silent people that they'll be in class just looking like this thing. But what they do out of it. So my foundation is strong. I built that foundation. And that's why when you hear me speak, you're just wondering, is it not the same? I, I, I speak. I, I know it. I know what I carry. And hardly will all these little things change, um, shake me. And which is why when I see people struggling, I feel like, ah, no. You know, no. It's not, uh, I wish, but I knew that oh, with, over how many years, I know how many years it took me to learn this thing. That training changed me. And that's why I said, you know what, my academy, I'll use it to reach out. Let people know I do this thing. Not just people that know me and then they'll come to me. If you know me that you know, you can ask me questions. I needed to be out there the more. And I got a message from my pastor's wife telling me yesterday. That was when um, you chosen clocked 10 years, two years ago. Yesterday, God wants to use you. And 
just allow him and all i heard was the fashion academy because you know lagos we need to package it they need to know that this is what you do people need to see the seriousness they need to know that you are running a business before they can key into the vision and that was what i did and i used that opportunity to reach out to people i give out resources i have trainings in bits in bits in bits i have the fashion design course where i teach you pattern drafting in fact now we are having um a 60 percent discount on fashion and intermediate class, you're supposed to pay 400k, you'll be paying 155,000 naira, you know, because we clocked a year. And even for the COVID, we would have done, um, would have done, would have celebrated it more. So we are running a 60% discount. And aside that, I have lots of other, other materials, other resources that will make it easy for you. But one thing I realized is, you know, during that lockdown, I did some free trainings because I knew what I was going to. I'm like, hey, no, I last first week, second week, no way. If I am feeling this way, how will other business owners feel? And then I did some free courses on bookkeeping, my courses that excuse me, even structure class, I taught them free. And I knew the impact it had on people. I saw the comments. I saw how people were so, and I'm like, God, thank you. I did this, you know, for them to see that, oh, okay, I can actually do this thing. It is not the end of the world. I did it when the old lockdown started, before people started doing trainings. I did that. And I am glad I did. I still have people in my space till now that, as, uh, that are doing fantastic as a result of that meeting. So at the academy, we have different packages how to structure your fashion business how to start the clothing line so if you're asking me pricing i can only advise you but that's just that's just like a topic you know is is a tip you have to go deep target audience you go deep you have to do this training there are a lot of affordable trainings although i understand you might feel like oh some people will just train nonsense everybody wants to train you would know the people when you see them you can tell when they are selling value do you understand? And regardless of how crap the train, you still at least get one thing. Is the next time the person will not have your money. So don't be scared to try. You have to keep trying. You have to keep trying. You have to keep trying new things. You have to keep trying. You will fail at many things. I did so many things, even while in this Lagos, and I failed. But guess what? That structure I took, that training changed my mindset. And since then, I've been able to diversify. I love to sew which was my passion. It's still my passion. But guess what? Passion will not get you where you want to be. It will only motivate you. It will only remind you, oh, you know you love me, so hang around. It will not keep you there. You have to learn the business side. I tell people in my fashion academy, run a business because you want to run a business. Don't run a business out of, fashion, out of passion. You understand? Don't run a business just out of passion. Um, if anybody um, has my, please, can you help me take down these questions and um, um, reach out to me via DM so I can address it and put it on my academy page, please. Um, please help me take down the questions if you can. Thank you very much. And reach out to me afterwards. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so um, as I was saying, so you have to um, improve yourself. You have to. Um, so, okay, I was talking about diversification, like that was what made me um, be able to diversify because now I love to cut and sew, but I don't see, I can't do it anymore because if I say I keep, I, I'm the one I want to cut all my customers with and sew my customers, how many will I sew in a day? I can never grow. If you want to grow, you have to learn to trust people and you have to learn to invest. You have to learn to take risk, do trainings. Now I have the Yetro's Lane ready to wear line. Well, by the time I had my second child... I did not have to, the shoots they had, <laughs> in fact, I was faffing because I knew nothing would shake me again. They designed the collection, they arranged the, sh the shoots, they got the models, because I modeled my clothes, that time they reached out to models, they got the models, they did everything, structure. I cannot come and go and die, you cannot do everything by yourself, you cannot. So when I see people, hey, I don't want to. You would know when you need more hands, when you start having enough orders and you are saying that, ah, I can't keep doing this. You have to learn to trust. But now, how do you handle those people? Trainings, it's, it cannot just happen. You can't just say, oh, I'm doing them well. Sentiments, they did not send you to do them well. But you have to know how it works. And how do you know how it works? You have to find a mentor. You have to get someone that is willing to hold your hands. You understand? You have to do lots of trainings. Even if you don't find someone, learn, learn. You know, if you say you're going to Google, you just keep, you can't, you, before you're able to absorb all the information, it's, but when you have someone that's there and telling you, this is how it works. I've done this before. This is the, this is the, um, this is the results. This is this. I did this. You can know. You shorten your learning curve. You learn from their experience. 
So whatever business you are into, look for someone in your field or outside your field. Like I have a mentor that, in fact, she is. She was. Um, she was a former executive um, um, director of GT Bank. She knows how to cut the cost and everything. She'll tell you today. She was one that opened my head. Even as a two years ago, as a last year, I still wasn't running the business the way I should run my business. I was still doing it out of passion. Say it today. You cannot do it all. Now you have to make business decisions. The um, session will soon be over. We have about 10 more minutes or 8 more minutes. You know. Um, she said, you have to run a business because you want to run a business. You know, you can't keep making some decisions and because I like her, I'm keeping her, but she's not useful for you. You take them out, you know. So you have to learn the business way. You understand? So that's one thing that has kept me. And because now I know how to run the business, I've put structures in place. I can do other things. My fashion academy, I'm not the one teaching everything. Now, how will I do it? I'm here now. They are still selling on my page. You have to get hands. You have to, you know, you can't, you can't rely on just your strength. You understand? So you need to learn to improve yourself. When you see training, don't have that mindset of, no, it's not free, I'm not doing. Stop it. Because you are depriving yourself of so much. Fine, if it's free, take it. If it's not free, if it's something you need, you go for it. Okay? Me, I'm not doing it for uh, money. And that's why, do you know how many trainings I pay for? There was one. <laughs> I, till now, I still have a training that I've not even gone, I've not even registered, you know? So please, you have to improve yourself. With knowledge, you have to. Things are evolving, you know. You have to. All those links you see on my page, I do them by myself. If I don't, if I've not put structures in place, I won't be able to diversify. I won't be able to do other things. Do you understand? And the academy, like I was saying, um, so we have those courses that would help you. One course can take like a day, and we trash it out. You have all your questions, and you are fine. But you still have to put in the work. Do you understand? You have to put in the work. And um, for the inner circle, people have been asking me about the inner circle. It's just where um, I'm able to, like, if you're just on my page, I can just give you tips. Because I don't know you, I'm not seeing you, so I can't give you, except you come to me. And I can't always have the time for you. So the inner circle is where you have my attention. Like, attention for a month session. And if you still want to continue, there's a subscription of maybe 2K that you still continue. But that attention for one month where I coach you, I drill you, and we know we go back to the basis on why we started. It, up, it, it runs every month. I've done August, and the reviews have been amazing. It is beyond just a mentorship program. It is a ministry. It is a ministry for me. You need to read the reviews. Yesterday, we, um, we, we, we welcomed the second batch for August. And you need to see the way, the stories, the reasons why people were going to quit in the first place. And I'm wondering, like, and why will you quit? To the point of tailors, how do I even handle, what kind of tailors can I get? And I have to bring them, do you know there are three levels of tailors? It depends on the one you want. There are some you have and you go and sleep, two eyes closed, they will sort it out. There are some that you give them work to do, but you use one eye to sleep, open the other eye because <laughs> what they will do might not be what you want. And there are some that they are just a jikani shop. All they do is just join clothes. You know those men that will carry machine? That's what they do. You know, but everybody has that tag tailor. So you have to be among somebody that has done it. There are lots of things that is disturbing your business. And all you need is just clarity. It's just somebody to tell you, no, this is the route to go. How do you want to sell your market? Even I am not, ex I'm not fully exploring the sales channel that I have available. I wish I can do so much more, but I'm just taking it little by little. I don't do more than I can handle. So when I have it, I'm not just shutting down. I do things the way I want to. Somebody's asking, can I still join? No, you have to join the September back so you can um, pre-register. You can reach out to me after XD, XD, e -L -C -C -Y stitches. So like that. So you have to, whether whatever field you're into, look for mentorship. Not everybody is willing. And one common testimonial I get from them is, I wish I had met you before I started my fashion business. Whether you're having a fashion business or not, you just need someone to hold your hands. I wish I had that. There was a particular woman, thanks to my answer, I never forget. I never forget those kind of people. There was another woman, I won't mention her name, that was supposed to help me. And she promised me two weeks of training, two weeks of internship. Let me just be in her space for two weeks. And she stopped taking my calls. Why? Why? The sky is big enough, for, big enough for everybody to fly. And it's not everybody that would want to pour out the information. Me, I give, I talk too much. I will give you more than what you want. It's not left for you to go and sort it out. I give you. You want to know the tailor. Uh, if you like, take my agent's number. Uh, the way I will treat them is not the way you treat them. Now by that, 
Do you understand? So, yes, you can do th things little by little, but you need to have a mission on why you're doing what you're doing. So I think um, the session will soon be over. I know a lot of us have other things to do. I've said I won't spend more than one hour. We can do another video, another live um, video some other time. Okay, I will try and um, save up. If you're interested, just send me a DM. I will try to save it. I pray it saves. The last live I did did not save. I'll try to save it so you can um, watch it over and over again. If you have questions, please send them to my email, um, to my DM. I'll respond to you there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope my story has inspired you. I have so much to say. Like I said, one hour is not enough to share my story, my experience. Uh, what have I not seen? Is it owing me money? People owing me money or, you know, we have 20 seconds remaining. Um, so, yes, take care, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pray says, bye. <laughs> save, save, save. End video.